to launch the uh, program, I'm just going to type Inca at the MATLAB command line and uh, it should launch the program. So, uh, so we start out with the uh, user interface um, and I'm going to go through an example to show you uh, how to set up a very simple model. Uh, this uh, simple model is actually included in the uh, demo folder along with the software so, um, so you can look up the finished model there um, but I'm going to go through the setup of this model. So to do that uh, first we have to start entering the reaction equations for our metabolic network um, and so we use a, a very simple syntax to do that. So this uh, network has five reactions um, involving um, uh, about six different metabolites. So we enter uh, the reactions in this way. Uh, the substrate goes to the product. In parentheses here, uh, these are the uh, atom transitions. So each of these uh, lowercase letters co correspond to an atom in, uh, in the substrate metabolite or the product metabolite. So if there's an a atom rearrangement, then we would rearrange the order of these uh, letters here in parentheses to represent that rearrangement. So there's the first reaction, then the second reaction. Uh, this is a reversible reaction, so we use a, a double-headed arrow to represent a reversible reaction. Um, and then the third reaction is uh, entered this way and here we actually have uh, metabolite B is broken into two products uh, metabolite C which takes the second and third atoms of B and then metabolite E which uh, contains the the first atom from the substrate B and then the fourth reaction is entered this way. Uh, so this is a condensation of two different uh, metabolites, B and C, uh, to, make to make three products, D, and two molecules of E. And then the last reaction is metabolite D being converted into metabolite F. So that is our reaction um, network. And so once I have those entered, uh, I can hit the enter button and it will build that uh, metabolic network. Once you hit enter, you'll see that the other icons up here on top uh, become active. Uh, all of the icons to the left of this divider have to do with setting up the model and entering the data and all of the icons to the right have to do with an analyzing uh, the model. So uh, let's continue with the with the setup of the model. So the next icon which says edit reactions allows us to go in and enter further inter information about those reactions. We can rename them, we can, uh, we can specify initial guesses for the rates uh, of those various reactions. So for this example I'm going to specify uh, an initial guess for reaction 1 to have uh, a net flux of, of 100. When I enter that it will automatically adjust the, uh, the rates of the other reactions so that the mass balance within the network is conserved. So this we can enter as our initial guess. Uh, so there's a lot of other uh, additional things you can do on this page that are described in the user manual. You can set upper and lower bounds for the different fluxes. You can fix uh, some of the fluxes to uh, define values that, that won't be adjusted by the program. Uh, you can also edit the stoichiometry and the atom transitions uh, of the reactions directly from this page. Uh, then we can move on to the, the next icon which uh, is titled Edit Nodes. So this allows us to edit information about each of the metabolite nodes in the metabolic network. 
um, we can uh, we can specify whether uh, that metabolite is mass balanced or not, uh, and we can see uh, different properties of those metabolite nodes, in particular whether it's a source, which means that it's consumed by the network but not produced, uh, or if it's a sink, which means it's a product uh, of the network. Then from there we can go to the next page, which uh, says edit metabolites. So here's where we can see properties, uh, more properties of the individual metabolites. We can see what atoms make up those metabolites and we can edit these if we want. So by default, it assumes that they're all carbon atoms, but we can adjust these to be other types of atoms. Uh, so we can select on each metabolite, uh, edit the composition of its uh, labeled atoms, and we can also uh, set up advanced um, we can define advanced uh, properties of those metabolites such as symmetry or equivalent atoms. So these features are also described in the um, user ma manual. So finally, once we have our metabolic model uh, set up, then we can go to this um, next icon which says edit experiments. And so this is where we can define our isotope labeling experiments and enter experimental data from those uh, from those experiments. So to create a new experiment, we just uh, click on this button here. We can give uh, it a name and a description, and then we can select on that experiment. And there's uh, three types of uh, information that we need to enter for each experiment. Uh, which is represented by these three sub icons that show up whenever we're on this uh, menu or whenever we're on this panel. Uh, the first icon allows us to enter uh, fluxes that are directly measured. Um, so for this example, we can assume that the, uh, the first flux, R1, uh, was measured to have a rate of 100 with an error of let's say uh, plus or minus 1. So we can enter uh, a direct flux measurement in that way. So the next step is uh, to uh, create a, a mass spec measurement. So I'm going to do that by uh, creating a new measurement. This measurement is going to be for the metabolite F. So I'm going to select F from the drop down menu and we're measuring all three atoms of F. So I enter that there. Um, next, we can select F from the drop-down menu to enter the actual data. Uh, so this is uh, the mass isotopomer abundances of F. So we enter it as a vector where the first entry is the M0 uh, abundance, or the unlabeled abundance. Uh, the second entry is the uh, M1 abundance, or the singly labeled abundance. And so I'm entering some data that uh, I'm taking from a, a paper. And then lastly we enter the, uh, the M3 abundance. So this is the mass isotopomer distribution that we assume has been measured for metabolite F. And uh, as well as the experimental error or uncertainty associated with that measurement. And then lastly, uh, to define the experiment, we would, uh, we would set up the tracer. Uh, so in this case, the tracer is uh, the metabolite A, which is labeled on the second carbon position, which I've uh, entered here. Uh, I've selected uh, that metabolite from the drop-down menu and we're assuming that it's 100% enriched. Going to the next tab, we uh, or to the drop-down menu, we specify which atom is labeled, so that's atom 2, the second atom, and this is the uh, uh, the isotopic purity of that atom, which is uh, in this case 100% M plus 1 label. So once we've entered that information, we have uh, everything needed to, uh, to perform the flux estimation. So we can go to the next, uh, we can go now to the analysis icons 
and select the flux estimation icon. We can adjust the uh, options. In particular, one thing that I like to do is to have, use multiple restarts uh, from different random initial guesses to make sure that I get a global optimum solution. And so I next would hit the estimate fluxes uh, and it would then give me uh, the flux solution. In this case, this is the, uh, the rate of each of these fluxes here and this is the standard error. This is an approximate standard error based on uh, the local uh, properties of the optimal solution. You can do a more rigorous uncertainty analysis by clicking on uh, this parameter continuation icon and that will give us uh, uh, rigorous upper and lower bounds on each of these uh, flux estimates. There's various other types of statistical analysis that can be done to assess whether you have an acceptable fit, uh, to um, view the lack of fit for each of the measurements as shown here, and also to assess whether the um, residuals are normally distributed. So, uh, so that's the uh, flux estimation. There are other types of analysis that can be done. Uh, the other one I'll mention is a tracer simulation. So this is where you know, if we have a model and we have a best guess set of uh, flux values, we can simulate the labeling data for that model. Uh, and this uh, would tell us what the labeling should look like for that set of fluxes. And if we change the flux values, we can then re-simulate and see how we would expect the labeling information to, uh, to change. Um, some other features that, that I won't discuss at this time but are uh, described in the user manual. There's also um, capabilities for doing constraint-based analysis. This is uh, flux balance analysis, uh, flux variability analysis. Uh, these types of analysis don't, uh, don't use the isotope labeling data, but they tell us information about the metabolic network uh, connectivity and the structure of the metabolic network. And then finally, there's a, um, a feature to do uh, optimal experiment to design to select the best tracers for a particular isotope labeling experiment. Uh, so that's another advanced feature of the software. Again, uh, many types of options are available and can be controlled by the user here under the options menu. There's a user manual available under the help menu as well as an index of all of the functions that are used uh, by the software. Um, and of course, uh, under the file menu you can open your previously saved models or, or save your models or export them to other formats. And so just as an example, uh, you know, we can save the model that we've created by just, uh, you know, defining a new folder and then, uh, and then naming the um, the file and saving it there, which will allow us to then go in and open that model later. So this is uh, just an overview of the software and the capabilities that it has. Again, you can find this uh, simple model in the demo folder and, um, and you can see what this uh, example looks like after it's been uh, completely set up um, from scratch.